This is my homemade milling machine. And this is a spindle I bought for a ridiculous price. Put them together and you get this. Okay, might not have been quite as simple as that. Hey there, ever done something you knew you'd regret? Well, today you get to watch me claw my way back from the depths of contrition and stand victorious atop the foothill of mediocre machine components. Sort of. Let's get this out of the way. When it arrived, this spindle sucked. Not only did it suck, it really sucked. Take a look at this. What you're seeing here is 30 microns of run out in the spindle taper. And if that was as bad as it got, I might be able to live with it. But as soon as we install a tool holder, that number jumps up to a tenth of a millimetre. That is more than enough to break tools, ruin parts, and bring a grown man to tears. This is the result of the spindle taper not being parallel with its axis of rotation. By the time you put a cheap collet and a tool into the mix, things get wacky. We're not even going to talk about this. So with a heavy heart, I did what any sane person would do. Oh, you sent it back? No way. I bolted it to the machine and had a go at grinding the taper myself. I got some pretty good results too. And when I say pretty good, I mean for a first try. In a home shop. On a machine I built myself. Of course, I didn't think about the fact that it was a square peg destined for a round hole. So all that work was for naught. But I did feel pretty good about myself. I pulled it apart and trimmed down the housing so that it would fit the machine. I considered building a whole new headstock the current one was built just as the budget for material was running out. But I finally managed to draw a line in the sand and stop myself spending time and money on this thing before I even have it cutting. I added some grub screws to the bearing nut so it would be held in place with a little more than hopes and dreams. As expected, after assembly, all the run out had returned and then some. You see, the runout would have been caused, in part, by eccentricity in the low precision, deep groove ball bearings. No matter. I fixed it once. I can fix it again. <laughs> right? Right? The process was the same the second time, just with the setup reverse. But the outcome was completely different. No matter how many passes I took, at every feed and speed imaginable, I kept getting high spots, running in a circle around the taper. It might have been that I didn't have everything aligned quite so well this time around, or it could have been an irregularity in the z-axis linear guides, but it was definitely giving me the shits. I tried everything. And when I finally felt like I had nothing to lose, I reached for the die grinder and went to town. Using a sharpie, I highlighted the high spots and took note of the run out direction, then carefully removed material. And eventually I ended up here, with absolutely terrible taper contact, but consistently less than 20 microns of run out at the tool holder. Is it perfect? <laughs> Will it get the job done until I buy the spindle I should have bought in the first place? Maybe. Before I'd remove the old three-phase spindle, I cut a temporary motor mount out of 25mm acrylic. This single flute was more blunt than a stick of butter, so I had to slow down the feed quite a bit. 
but it got there in the end. I made up some angle brackets and bolted them into the headstock. And then the servo and its mounting plate went on top. This five-way solenoid valve will control the pneumatic cylinder for tool changes and makes a pretty sweet sound while doing it. If you like sweet sounds, you should like the video. And if you subscribe, I'll know you want to hear more. It wasn't until after I'd gone to the trouble of designing and 3D printing a switch housing to cycle the drawbar that I discovered this little manual bypass on the side. Oh, are you kidding me? But that's all right. It still makes a great stress toy. I installed the servo drive in the cabinet and wired in all the connectors. Now, unfortunately, the manual for this drive is entirely in Chinese. But fortunately for me, my mate's been getting lessons and he owed me a favor. After I got the translated manual, I soldered up the D-sub connector and ran the wires to some screw terminals. For now, I won't be using all of these. Just the 0 to 10 volt analog input, which is connected to the motion controller for speed control, and the servo enable signal, which is toggled by this switch. I didn't bother connecting the solenoid control wires. Until I've got a tool changer set up, it's probably safer to just control it manually. Setting the parameters was a bit tricky until I realized I had to write the changes to memory and restart the drive. Then it worked on the first try. And there we have it. I've now got a spindle with fantastic low speed torque and I don't have to fiddle with collets every time I change tools. All that to say, I can do stuff like this. and unfortunately stuff like this. That's not the sound you want to be hearing. That headstock really does ring like a bell. Definitely needs a redesign. But it can do this. And in the end, we end up with whatever this is. Now, after all that milling action, I did notice some fretting corrosion starting to form on the tool holders. And basically, this is caused by tiny amounts of movement between close fitting metal surfaces. It could be caused by not enough tension on the drawbar, but the more likely culprit is my taper grinding hack job and the resulting minimal contact between the two tapers. I would have another go at grinding, Maybe by tilting the headstock and only moving a single axis this time. But frankly, I've got more important things to do. Like getting my new lathe to stop doing this.
and putting together this giant Beyblade spinner. Oh man, this is terrifying. <laughs> Kyle just looks like a lawnmower. Oh. And I'd say I've gone way beyond the effort this half-cooked spindle deserves. This is my homemade milling machine. And with a heavy heart, I did what any sane person would do. So with a heavy part, and the housing soldered fit machine. Blah.